So what have I learned from figuring out the waking up strategies of over 250 people? And I'm talking about the people that actually the, are not chronic snooze button pushers, but people that actually get out of bed. And there is actually a commonality. In the NLP training, we teach a, a process called TOTE, test, operate, test, exit. And we use eye movements um, to figure out. And I also like to teach uh, the, the, the type of questioning required to find out specific details to make the unconscious conscious. So a combination of that, watching eye movement, asking the right questions in the right order, helps you to figure out how someone uses their brain. And so I demonstrate for my students in the NLP practitioner class. So there's an NLP practitioner, NLP master practitioner. I'm actually uh, in Venice Beach right now, where Los Angeles, where I hold the training here in the beach condo uh, three times a year. I also train in Bali, in Mexico, and Amsterdam. So what is it that, that I then do is I demonstrate with a thing that is highly unconscious to a person is how do I actually launch from waking up to actually getting out of bed. And, and the commonality is something that you could think about. Well, first of all, um, a person who has an excellent waking up strategy um, tends to be aware about how much sleep they need. Yeah, so they, they have an awareness that it's difficult to have a nice way of waking up if you are actually sleeping too little hours. Yeah? So uh, science has, uh, has determined that um, people need about seven to nine hours of sleep um, in order to um, be, be well rested. Yeah? So it assumes that you have been going to bed on time. Yeah? And so what do people do when they get out of bed? Okay, so, so I noticed that their strategy is very small. So a person that lingers in bed they go, oh my God, I love the blankets, and I like to be here, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They start, to imagine, they, they start to really start to focus on their attention on how nice it is to be in bed, and how sleepy they are, how they prefer to be in bed. And the chronic snooze button pushing is really about the delay of keeping that pleasure. What a person does who's quickly under bed, they have a much smaller process. And though it can differ a little bit, some people have children, some people need to go, go to the restroom or whatever, there's a lot of light coming into the room. One thing that people consistently do is they start to imagine what their day would be like if they got up. Yeah? So what is the positive payoff in most cases of my students, to be honest, is that I, I, I tend to teach people that have a, a, a positive way of looking at the world. I've noticed that positive people are more likely to get up in the morning and have a real morning routine. And they go, I want to get up because then I get to do yoga or meditation or NLP or I get to study or I don't have to rush and those types of things. There's on the flip side for some people that are a little bit away motivated, they're motivated by pain impulse, that they want to get out of bed because of what happens if they stay in bed. It could be if I stay in bed, then my body will be in pain. That would be one reason. Or if I stay in bed, then I would have to rush. If I stay in bed, then people will get angry with me. Those types of things. So there's a, so there's a motivation to get out of bed. So it's a very short strategy that is about the world outside of the bed, that the payoff to be outside of the bed, rather than focus on the blankets and the warmness of the blankets. Another thing that I've really noticed is that because they make it so short, there is very little, um, it's like the five second rule. The moment that you wake up, you get up. So your brain doesn't start this dialogue that kind of convinces you that it's okay to stay in bed longer. So that is what I've learned from eliciting so many waking up or getting out of bed strategies over the last, gosh, 15 years or so, see you around.